Welcome to Building Trust, one of the webinars that we're doing here at Cortec to just further enhance and, and share some of the things that we do. Um, Cortec Revolution has been in business for 15 years. We started off as a small company, basically doing web development and have really evolved into a leading healthcare IT consulting company, and we work across the nation. Uh, we do everything from strategic planning, organizational development, um, digital platforms, digital medicine, work optimization, et cetera, you name it. Um, we, we work in IT, we specialize in healthcare. And as I said, we continue to grow. We not only have clients in the Indianapolis area, but we actually work at much more of a national level. Michelle Burton, who will be our lead speaker today and really presenting, is the CEO and principal owner of Cortec. Michelle started the company after already having a strong career in healthcare. So Michelle's been in healthcare for over 20 years, um, doing a variety of technology, um, health information exchange work, web work, um, digitized medicine, working with a variety of customers there. So quite a nice, varied background. She has worked with companies of all sizes from the small little startups to Fortune 50 companies in her role doing the strategy and consulting. And her expertise is in project and program management. When I say that, I mean all the phases of it um, in that capacity. I'm Jane Niederberger, and I'm an executive strategy consultant with Cortec. I've been working with Cortec for a few years, working on more of the strategic work that we have that we've been doing. We're having a fun time. So, with that, let's talk on about our webinar and what we're doing. Um, the recording in the slide deck will be emailed to you after today's. I almost said performance. I guess that's not the right word. After today's presentation. Um, so, so you will have that as a reference and, and you'll have notes there for you. Um, please submit your questions anytime while we're going through the webinar. We will have adequate time at the end for Q&A. And lastly, we will send you a survey after today's session, as, session asking for feedback. It's really important to us that you take the time to fill that out. That's the only way we know how to get better and how to make our content more relevant to you. So it is extremely important to us and we really appreciate you making the effort to do it. It shouldn't take you long at all. So let's talk about our agenda. We're talking about building trust and why it's so important. And, and then what happens when trust is broken? Trust, trust isn't easy, it's hard. And you not only have to build it and maintain it in an organization, but as a leader, you need to figure out how to promote it. So Michelle is going to lead us through this webinar as we talk about trust. Michelle? Thanks, Jane, I appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna start with the basics. Um, you know, what is trust? So if we define trust, it's an assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of something or someone. Or it's one in which confidence can be placed. Um, so when you think about trust, you have to think about what do these definitions mean? What do they mean to you? Um, what is an assured reliance on character? Uh, generally speaking, that just means that if somebody tells you who they are, you believe them. <clears throat> And, you know, I've heard before uh, this quote, and I'm probably going to botch it, so forgive me, but, um, you know, if someone shows you who they really are, believe them. And it, that's exactly what trust is, right? If, if someone does something over and over and over again that is not of good character or is, um, you know, kind of underhanded, you know, believe them. Believe that that's who they are and that breaks trust. But the flip side is true as well. If, if they're constantly have your back uh, when it comes to leadership, if they promote, you know, education, you know, then you should believe that too. Um, making sure that you, you are putting your trust in the right people and that you are um, 
actually allowing yourself to trust, which is one of one of the very difficult things to do. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then just to take that one step further, this is also very much about, as Jane mentioned in the previous webinar, webinar you know, you have to walk the talk. So you can't just say, hey, I'm a trustworthy person. Believe me, follow me. I'm going to do all these great things. You should trust me. <clears throat> you have to you have to actually do those things. You have to walk the talk. If you're going to tell people you're trustworthy, you have to be trustworthy. If you're going to tell people you have good character, you have to have good character. Um, so it's just making sure not only do you know who you're placing your trust in, but also making sure that you yourself are being a trustworthy person and one that folks can depend on. So what is a culture of trust? These statistics, I mean, we've done this webinar before, but these statistics blow my mind every time. <laughs> um, so if you have a culture of trust inside your organization, um, you have 106% more energetic folks at work. Your team is more energetic. 76% of people are more engaged in their jobs, 74% uh, less stress, 29% uh, more life satisfaction, and 13% fewer days off from illness. So when you think about these statistics, you have to consider what does that mean? What do these statistics mean? It means that trust is really a company asset. Uh, I mean, it's a word we throw around, but it's much much more than just the word trust, right? It has a huge impact on your organization and your team, and it's a company asset that needs to be watched over, taken care of, and cultivated. Um, it's very, very powerful. Um, and when you think about that culture of trust, I would challenge you to think about who are the people that you trust and why do you trust them? Um, Typically, I would say that it's because in, in a work environment, it's because you have felt listened to, you've felt heard. Um, if you're sharing your, I'm going to call them secrets, uh, that they're, they're not shared with everyone else. So, and what I mean by that is, have you ever had a boss? Uh, where you're having trouble with like another coworker and you and you go to that leader um, and you tell them, hey, I'm having trouble with, you know, Mary, and you explain why. And then that boss immediately goes and tells other people on your team that you're having that problem with that coworker. And then suddenly trust is broken and the problem is much bigger than it originally was. You know, as a leader, your employees are going to tell you so many different things, and they have to trust that you're going to keep those things in confidence for them uh, so that they're going to come to you with some of their problems. Some of them are going to be things that are less important, but some of them are going to be things that are extremely important. And Either way, whether it's the less important or the more important items that they're coming to you with, if they know they can come to you, they can trust you, it's going to improve all these statistics that we're looking at on the screen. It's going to make them feel more engaged. It's going to make them feel less stressed. It's going to make them feel more satisfied. And that's really what you're looking for when you're trying to build that culture of trust and promote that asset inside your organization. Broken trust. This one, this one is my favorite one to talk about. <laughs> uh, so broken trust is, is a bunch of different things. Um, it in, inclu includes lack of courage, being self-centered, having hidden agendas, um, not wanting to get your hands dirty, inconsistent behavior, lack of purpose, reputation issues. Uh, and I know we have all worked in an environment where there is broken trust. And, and if you haven't worked in an environment when there's broken trust, lucky you. <laughs> uh, I've been on both sides uh, in my career, both when have worked for people. I've worked in environments where trust has been broken. Um, inside my own organization, I've worked with clients where trust has been broken. And 
unfortunately, you know, I've worked in situations being in business for 16 years where I've had situations where I've done something uh, inadvertently where it's broken trust between myself and my employees. And it always boils down to typically one of these reasons, um, you know, lack of courage to talk about what the issues are, um, being self-centered, looking out for, you know, oneself, uh, not wanting to get your hands dirty, reputation issues. And so I have a great example. I, I worked with a client not terribly long ago, um, had another employee placed at this client location, and after probably working together for about a year, and my relationship with this client goes beyond a year's time frame. Um, it was probably a 10 year relationship with this particular client. But after working with this employee for about a year, um, they offered the employee a position. They had a contract with Cortex. I had a contract with the employee. So trust was broken all the way around inside that scenario and how to navigate it going forward um, to save both the employee relationship and the client relationship was a tricky uh, scenario to kind of navigate. Um, but it did change the relationship that I had with that particular client going forward. And so making sure, you know, now, when I work with them, that there are different safeguards in place, it's a completely different mindset. It changes how I think about them, how I work with them, how I navigate contracts with them. Uh, and, and you can see how, in the long run, that would be a huge problem. Another great example that also hits really close to home for me, <clears throat> I was personally working with a client on a contract. And this wasn't terribly long ago, actually just a few months. And when I started out this particular contract uh, with this client, the team of people they were working with uh, to get this work done had never been worked with before. So they didn't know how to do this work. However, they expected me to come in and know how to do this work within, I don't know, a week or two. Add on top of that, uh, there was conflict inside their team. So they had two team members who were looking at the situation from two different perspectives and giving conflicting advice on how to move things forward. Uh, and so as somebody new coming in, unsure of how to navigate that situation uh, and causing some confusion, it was taking longer to get my bearings on the project than it typically would. <clears throat> I tried to talk to them about it both independently and together. I tried to talk to their leadership team um, to try and figure out how to navigate. Uh, but what ended up happening in this particular scenario is that the person I was working directly with, he, he had broken trust towards me. He lost confidence um, because you know, of his own agendas, you know, hidden agendas, right, or reputation issues, he lost confidence that I was going to have the ability to get the job done. And instead of coming directly to me to have those conversations, lack of courage, he uh, started going to everybody else. And I was working on other projects inside this team where this wasn't an issue. Uh, and so he was going to those other team members and having conversations with them. Uh, do you think Michelle is a good project manager? Do you think Michelle can do her job? Are you having trouble with Michelle? Um, and these conversations started to get back to me. And what was happening is it was impacting my other projects that I was working on with this particular organization. And the folks on those other project teams, for no reason, because I was effectively doing those pieces of work, started to have a lack of trust in me because their team member whom they trusted was questioning my abilities. So how did I handle that situation? That's probably what you're wondering. <clears throat> it was tricky to navigate, but what I ended up doing was going directly to this resource and saying, hey, can we have a chat? Let's, let's talk. And so we talked and I told him, I was very honest um, in a very nice, kind way and said, I've heard, you know, you have some concerns about my ability to do this work. 
let's have a conversation about it. And we did, and it turned out a little rocky at first, but ended a very good conversation. And by the end of the contract that I was working on, um, that person was actually an advocate to keep me on the team. Um, they wanted to extend the contract longer so they could continue to work with me. So you can see how when trust is broken, it can have an overarching impact, not just on the area you're working in, but across all teams um, and a lot of negative impacts. But if you approach it with, with trust, right, you go to the person and you, and you trust that a conversation with them is going to work, you can rebuild that bond and have a positive outcome. So it's, it's tricky. Uh, and then Jane, I think you also had a really good example about broken trust. I, I do. I um, When I had first came into the technology background, I had a healthcare background forever. And when I moved into technology, one of the first um, deliverables I had was implementing an upgrade to a medical record system. And it was an automated medical record system that impacted both the hospital and the health center. So it was a big deal. Um, but everybody knew I was brand new. I was literally one month on the job and I was put in charge of the, the go live date. Needless to say, we went, we went live, uh, supposedly. No system came up, no system was working and it was a, quite a bit of a nightmare. Um, I had an awesome team that fixed it and knew how to do all of that. But because it impacted the hospitals and people going into the emergency rooms, we needed to communicate very quickly that it wasn't working. And here were the backup systems while we, while we fixed the issue. The, the trust issue that happened though is I reported to a gentleman who, again, knew I didn't have a strong technology background, had assured me he'd be by my side helping me through the process. Well, when everything kind of hit the fan, the CIO came looking for me. Um, and she was a very, very vocal, very passionate person, really cared about how we performed as an IT team. So when she came looking for me, everybody knew she was looking for me. She was at the top of her lungs looking for me. And my boss was nowhere to be found. I went looking for him to ask for advice. Will you come with me? How do I handle this? I really don't know this woman who's, I think, going to fire me. Uh, and literally, my boss had left the building. Someone said, he heard you were in trouble, and he walked out the door and got in his car and drove away. I, and I was just dumbfounded. I'm like, really? I, it, that would never have occurred to me that somebody would do that. Anyway, so the CIO hunted me down and I ended up meeting with her and she laid into me with, did I understand the impact and did I know what had happened? And she went on and on and on and on appropriately. And I finally figured, what the heck, what have I got to lose? I'm about to lose my job anyways. So I was able to look her in the eye and said, well, I'm not sure what you all expected. I don't have a technology background. Why did you put me in charge of something so important? without giving me a safety net. And her face broke into a huge smile. And she said, and so now tell me what you've learned through this process. I said, well, I need to surround myself with people who know what the heck they're doing and what I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I understand testing, et cetera. And I could give her a whole litany. So with her, she was just tickled. She was as happy as could be with me and said, okay, go on and do great things. So where I had never had a relationship with this woman, I now trusted her implicitly. Whereas the boss who was missing in action, we really never recovered that relationship. Um, as Michelle shared in her example, I went after him. It, not after him, I went to find him to sit down with what happened. Let's talk about this. I report to you. You're supposed to be mentoring and guiding me. And he just kept avoiding me. I had never seen anything like it in my entire life. I kept thinking, we're adults, I don't get it. Um, so very quickly, I cut him out of the loop because I would say he had lack of courage. 
he didn't want to have his hands dirty with this, and I don't think he wanted to be associated with me, but I could never even tell him the CIO is now okay with it. Your boss is okay. So that relationship really, really never ended up mending. He ended up leaving the company and I report, ended up reporting directly to the CIO eventually. But, um, but that's a, a story of how when things go wrong, sometimes trust can't be rebuilt and it's, it's not good for anybody. Thanks, Jane. So why is a culture of trust so hard? Trust is scary, right? And, and not just at work, right? It's scary in your personal life. Trusting people is a risk. It's, it is scary. Um, it's scary to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable in order to trust folks. Um, there's fear of judgment, negative opinions. Uh, you don't want people to think badly of you. You don't want to think badly of others. Uh, and there's fear of rejection. So, you know, trust is hard. It is not easy to put your trust in other people. And so often, I mean, even if you think of like our court system, right? You're innocent until proven guilty. And that's the way it should be in a work environment. You should trust someone until they give you a reason not to trust them. But unfortunately, you know, if you have worked for any period of time in your career, you've been burned by a situation involving trust inside of an organization. And so what tends to happen over time is we begin to not trust people until they give us a reason to trust them because we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to be rejected. And when those things happen, we feel bad. We don't feel good. You know, we go back to those statistics. You're, you're less productive. You're less energetic at work. You're more stressed. You know, trusting is hard. And, you know, I think back to the example that I just gave with the client, right? I had to make myself vulnerable to go sit down and have a conversation with the gentleman who was not trusting me. You know, I had to get over my fear of judgment, my fear of rejection in order to have a conversation with him. It takes courage to sit down into an environment where you're uncomfortable and where trust has been broken, to sit down and have a conversation with somebody and try to rebuild that bond. Because our natural inclination um, is just to wash your hands, right? Like, I don't trust this person, I don't like them, I'm not gonna work with them. But then what you're doing is promoting a culture where there's no trust. So. While that's the easier path, the outcome in the long run inside your team, inside your organization is not a positive one. You know, Jane's example is exactly the same. You know, for, for that guy uh, that she was working with to do the things that he did, you know, she felt judged. I'm assuming, Jane, you felt judged. <laughs> you felt rejected. You know, walking into the, your, your uh, CIO's office, you felt vulnerable. Right, and it took courage for you to have a conversation with her that was real and honest um, to build that culture of trust. And had you not done that, the outcome at that particular place of employment probably would have looked very different for you. Mm -hmm. So trust is hard. Um, I love this quote, trust is like the air we breathe. When it's present, nobody really notices. But when it's absent, everybody notices. Um, and that couldn't be more true, right? If you work for an organization where trust has been broken, everybody knows that that organization doesn't have trust. But if trust is good and things are clicking, you don't really notice it. You're just like, I love working here. This place is fantastic. Uh, and it's because you're working as one team. Everybody trusts each other. And it's a really great environment. So. Let's talk about building trust, right? So these are some things that you can do to help build trust. And walk the talk, of course, is highlighted because that's key. <laughs> you have to do what you say you're going to do. If you don't do what you say you're going to do, that in and of itself right there just breaks trust. Um, keeping your word. 
I mean, most of these goes, go without explanation. You can't say one thing and do another. Listen and collaborate. You have to be able to hear what people are telling you, especially as a manager, uh, and take that information and make it better. So inside Cortec, um, gosh, it's been several years ago now. Uh, I had a, a team uh, of about 10 folks who were reporting to me. And we had one person who had issues with trust, I'm just going to say in general. Uh, so it wasn't a team issue. It wasn't something that had happened inside the organization. It was particular, particularly related to this person. Uh, and as a result, this person's just general lack of trust started to bleed over to other team members. And when you work for a small business and that kind of thing happens, it's not good. <laughs> you know, it, it really starts to bring the walls down pretty quickly. Uh, and so what I had to do uh, as a manager was I pulled my team together and we had a two day workshop where we just went through everything inside the organization. <clears throat> What's our mission? What's our vision? What are our values? Um, why are we having trouble trusting? How can we work to, together as a team? What am I doing, you know, as the, the principal owner of the, of the company and your manager that is making you feel, you know, like you can't trust? Um, and we just went through it. <clears throat> it was raw. <laughs> it was hard. Um, but it was very good. I, I had to listen to everything that they were saying. And we worked together as a group to figure out a way to take the organization in another level, to another level. And as a result, you know, everybody there felt hurt. And so it broke down those walls that that one employee had started to build. And the rest of the team um, felt heard, they felt trusted, they felt like they were part of a team, and it really improved things. And then as an added benefit, it also helped that employee who had problems with trust feel like they were in an environment where they could be trust. There could be trust. And it kind of shed light without ever pointing to that particular employee. It kind of shed light for the other folks in the team as to the fact that this particular person had issues in general with trust. And so what happened is instead of being angry with this person, because again, Nobody ever mentioned that this person was the catalyst for the trust issue, right? They recognized it, and because we had collaborated and worked together as a team, when that person started to show a lack of trust in the future, the other team members just naturally jumped into action and listened and helped that person work through what they needed to work through so that we didn't come up with that big trust issue all over again inside the team because nobody liked the way that felt. So it was a really tough experience, but it was a great one. And I just can't speak highly enough for how much, even though when it's difficult as a leader, if you have an issue inside your organization, just listening to folks makes all the difference. I mean, and that goes along with the next one, you know, talk about obstacles. That's what we did. <laughs> um, so praise folks in front of their peers. You know, one of the things that Jane and I hear over and over and over again is somebody took credit for my work or, you know, I had this great idea and somebody else presented it as their idea. So as a leader, when you're trying to build a culture of trust, don't do that. You know, make sure folks know, even if you're the one presenting it, just because that's what the environment requires, uh, that it's a leadership presentation, make sure you're saying, hey, I have this really um, great idea. I think it's really going to work. It's going to take us to the next level. And Jane is the one who came up with it. Man, she just really hit the nail on the head with this. Uh, make sure folks know where those ideas are coming from. Praise people in front of their team members. It goes a long way. Um, Jane, I think you had a really good example about admitting when you're wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not one I'm particularly proud of. Uh, when I was in a senior leadership position at a very big company, um, one day, 
my email just disappeared. All my messages disappeared. They were gone. And I tried everything that I humanly knew how to get them back. And eventually I just called the, the manager who reported indirectly in, into me, who is responsible for the email system and laid into her because we had some systems issues, but I just laid into her ruthlessly that I, I didn't have email access. I needed it to do my job. I needed it immediately. I have presentations of work, blah, 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 blah. Um, probably four or five hours later, so she fixed it. I, I got what I needed. Four or five hours later, I realized that I had done something that wiped out my email, that kind of took it off my laptop and out of my space. I don't know exactly what I did, but I was the cause of the problem, not, not a system issue, um, not an application issue. It was all user error. It was very humbling. And as I said, I, I was pretty nasty because I was panicking. Again, not a proud moment. So I tried to think of the best way of approaching her and I knew she had a staff meeting the next morning. So I bought a tray full of cookies and basically crashed her staff meeting. And if you could have seen the look on her face when I walked in, it was horror, which thought I, I will never forget that because she thought I was gonna do it again and she thought I was gonna yell at her in front of her team, I'm sure. I don't think she ever expected me to publicly apologize to her in front of her entire team tell her I was wrong, she was right, I'm sorry I yelled at her, thank you for fixing my problem, um, here's some cookies that I knew didn't really make, make a difference or make it go away. I, and I just literally was falling all over myself apologizing. I was so humbled, so embarrassed um, by what I did. Now the feedback I got was very positive that I admitted when I was wrong. But I had to work on that relationship with her about building trust again, because I'm sure every time she saw me, she cringed. And I don't blame her. I, again, I was not a nice person when that happened. But I did try very hard to admit very publicly that I was wrong um, and she was okay. And, and that is, it sounds easier than it really is. Um, to do because I was literally shaking when I was walking into her staff meeting. I was probably just <laughs> as nervous and afraid to see her as she was afraid to see me. Um, because again, she could have told me, go take a hike, lady, you, you know, you're clueless. So she didn't, she was, she was much more gracious than I was. So but I think it's important to admit when, when you're wrong, because if you do it, then people will take more risks with you. Um, you know, they, they know that you're human too. It, it helped in that. So over the long haul, we had a fabulous relationship, but it was a little rocky there and took some work on my part. Her team also, all, all saw it as very positive, but they weren't in the throes of the nasty part. So Michelle, I hope that helps. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it reminds me of a quote, it's okay to fail, but if you're gonna fail, make sure you fail fast. <laughs> get over it <laughs> pick up move on and get past it so uh so give credit that's a lot like you know praising people in front of their peers making sure that you're giving people credit for what they're doing um whether it's you know a new idea um, going the extra mile working extra hours whatever it is making sure that you're acknowledging that um i work with somebody at a client site um this woman is a project manager She's fantastic. Um, probably one of the best project managers I've ever worked with. And she constantly goes above and beyond. Unfortunately, uh, just from the outside looking in, her manager does not recognize all that she does. And so when she was going through the process of her, her yearly review, um, there's a piece or a component where she had to give feedback on her, what she felt her performance was, and then the manager comments on that and says, yeah, you're right, or no, this is where you have an area for improvement. And across the board, 
um, this gentleman disagreed with her. And the reason I know this story is because she came to me for advice. How do I handle this? What do I do? What's the next step in my career? Kind of advice uh, because she trusted in me as an advisor. And what the outcome was is that her manager, as I said, clearly did not realize everything that this lady was doing for the team, working extra hours and picking up slack when somebody didn't understand the process, making sure she was an expert, an expert in every single facet of the projects that she worked on. Um, he really just did not recognize the value that she was bringing to the team and he didn't give her credit for that value. And as a result, like I said, it was, it was breaking the trust inside their relationship. And so she was coming to me for advice on how does she handle that. You know, unfortunately, in this particular situation, she's documenting. She was already doing everything that I could have given her advice on, documenting all the examples, making sure she was bringing that to his attention, um, having conversations with him about that. But none of those things were working. So I didn't have a lot of extra great advice for her except to validate the things she already was doing were the right approach. Um, but you can see how in this particular situation, the fact that this manager wasn't giving her credit for her efforts was having an impact on, again, if we go back to those statistics, you know, her satisfaction, her energy level at work, her stress level, um, it, they were all being impacted by this particular situation. Um, getting to know people and smiling. You know, Jane always tells this really great story <laughs> about when uh, she was a new CIO at Anthem. I'm telling your story, Jane, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the things that people commented on was that, that she didn't seem approachable. Uh, so she took the time, even though it's not in Jane's comfort zone to, um, Jane's more of an introvert, I guess, to, smile and chat with people. Jane started to take the time when she saw people in the hall to stop, look up, look them in the eyes, smile, get to know them, ask personal questions. Uh, and that made all the difference inside that organization at the time. And people really started to feel like they could trust her and that they cared about her or that she cared about them. Sorry. Uh, so just getting to know people, looking at smiling, looking approachable makes a a big difference in building trust, it's the little things that you don't think about. And then don't gossip. Um, I'm going to use myself again as an example, simply because Cortec is a smaller company. Uh, when you work in a smaller company, you become friends, right? And so lines start to get blurred between, you know, leadership and team members because, you know, when there's 10 people, you know, you you tend to all know each other very well. And as a result, it starts to become like a family, which is good <laughs> because everybody knows everybody, everybody's got each other's backs, like I talked about with that other example, helping that one team member work on trust issues. But it also has a downside uh, because what tends to happen when everybody knows everybody and knows everybody so well is you talk about each other. Um, did you hear, you know, Mary didn't get that project or that, you know, and then you just, it kind of starts to spin out of control and you have to find a way to stop that in its tracks. And sometimes it's hard to recognize until you've already gone down the path. But when you, when you start to gossip and people find out about it, it does break trust uh, because people don't want to be talked about, you know, we go back to fear of judgment fear of rejection, um, that's what gossip, you know, makes people feel judged, makes people feel rejected. So you have to try really hard, regardless of the size of your organization or even a team inside of an organization, or if you're with a smaller company like myself, to make sure that you're not talking about the other people on your team in a negative way. And if you are, or if somebody else is, you flip the script, you know, and I've done that before where I walk into a conversation and people are complaining about somebody else on the team and, you know, I'll just say, hey, you know, there's two sides to every story. And I am sure that there's some truth in what this person is saying. And there's probably some truth over here too. And we're not in the situation, so we're never going to know 
the reality, but we just have to decide whose back are we going to have? And it should be Mary's, you know? So you really just have to make sure that if you, if you walk into a situation where people are talking, you try to diffuse it and that you have to be really mindful yourself that you don't fall into that trap because it really is a, a trap. I think that's very easy to fall into. So another great quote that I love so much. <laughs> um, I've learned that people will never forget what you said. People will forget what, People, I'm sorry, I will learn that people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's true. And I think many of the examples um, that we've given today show exactly that. You know, obviously, uh, I am always going to remember how the manager on the project I worked on recently made me feel when he was talking about me negatively to other people. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to take that with me. Hopefully, um, my team members will remember the two-day workshop and the time that I put into it um, to make them feel included. Um, Jane, I think, clearly still very intimately remembers the experience with her CIO. <laughs> uh, so, you know, those feelings, they stick with you. They leave imprints on you and they're hard to shake. So we've talked about why trust is important, um, what to do when trust is broken, why building trust is hard, and how to promote trust. Um, it has been, it, it is a hard journey. It's a difficult experience um, to follow these steps. And hopefully you have found this useful and a better experience uh, going forward. And if there's anything that we can do to help continue to walk you through this, please let us know. And please, if you have any questions, um, write them in in the Q&A session. And, and Michelle, we do have one question. Um, what advice would you give somebody who says that they can't trust their boss? That's a great, uh, that's a great question. I think uh, I would probably ask for more information. Why do you feel like you can't trust your boss? Uh, and try to break that down with the person if I was going to um, give them advice is break down why they feel like they can't trust their boss. And if it was appropriate, and again, it depends on the scenario, I would encourage them to talk to their boss, much like I had the conversation um, with the gentleman that I worked with on that contract not long ago. Um, and if it's not appropriate to talk to their boss because something else is happening, um, you know, talk to somebody else inside the organization that you can trust who is going to help you navigate that scenario more appropriately. Okay, and I would, I would also add in on that, sometimes if you genuinely can't get past that, you just need to move on and recognize mm -hmm. it, and recognize that it, it's not a win-win situation for you and go to a happier place, you'll find it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's similar to that client situation example I gave earlier where, you know, they breached their contract. You know, I've had to look at whether or not a long-term relationship with that particular client is still one that we want to engage in. Um, so it can go larger, I think, than just employee-manager relationships. I mean, sometimes you have to look at it a, on a bigger scale. One more question. If you are, the question is, if I'm new to a leadership position or new to a team, what advice or first steps would you give me to building a trusting environment? Yeah, uh, well, let's assume that the environment doesn't have a big trust issue when you're walking in, <laughs> because that probably would be handled differently than, than just a norm, walking into a normal team. Um, but what I would do, personally speaking, is really just get to know my team members, um, sit down and have one-on-one -on -one with them, one-on-ones with them, um, get to know them personally, what their goals are, 
um, what they feel like the issues are on the team. Just listen to them, let them be heard. Uh, I would do that individually and then collaboratively, I would bring the team together and share those things that were appropriate, right? Obviously, you don't want to break trust by sharing too much, but if folks, if you if you have a consistent message across the team, like, you know, nobody shows up to meetings on time, um, then I would probably share that. Like, hey, I've heard from several folks that we have an issue showing up to meetings on time. So let's talk about that as a group and figure out how we can fix it. Um, because I think just hearing people, letting them know you care and letting them feel heard makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all the questions we have. Um, we appreciate your time and, and focus on building trust today. We do have one more webinar coming up in this series, and that is next Tuesday at 8 a.m. And it's about building the right team and keeping the team engaged. And that's actually a, another fun one that we hope you can join us for. I, I think you'll learn um, some little tips and tricks that, that you can take away. And um, you can register by clicking right online here. Uh, as you've registered for this one. So in the meantime, if there are things that we can do with helping you build trust or around the values or the goals, please don't hesitate to reach out to Michelle or I. You have both of our contact information. You've got the Cortec website, um, and we would love to engage in a conversation with you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Have a great day.